the Boeing 787. Dreamliner was supposed to be the jet no airline could resist. We had great execution of the taxi testing over the last few days, so everything has just really been flawless. Boeing spent over $30 billion building it, and carriers from Tokyo to London rushed in with orders worth tens of billions more. But not Delta. America's most profitable airline turned down Boeing's flagship and bet its future on Airbus instead. A $10 billion rejection that sent shockwaves through aviation. Why would Delta walk away from the plane that promised to change long-haul flying forever? And how did that single choice tilt the balance in the world's fiercest rivalry? Delta's aging giants. By the early 2010s, Delta had a problem every airline eventually faces an aging wide body fleet. Its Boeing 747s were burning fuel at staggering rates, its 767s were reliable but getting old, and competition on long-haul routes was heating up. On paper, the solution seemed ready-made. Through its 2008 merger with Northwest Airlines, Delta had inherited an order for 18 brand new Boeing 787, eight Dreamliners. For Boeing, this was the prize. The 787 was the first airliner built mostly from carbon fiber composites, lighter and more fuel efficient than anything before it. Airlines everywhere were clamoring for delivery slots. The situation looked simple. Delta had the order. Boeing had the plane. The Dreamliner was supposed to define the future. But Delta was never the kind of airline to buy a jet just because it was new. For them, every deal had to make sense on cost and control. And for an airline like Delta, which prided itself on buying the right airplane at the right price, waiting in line wasn't good enough. The stage was set. Boeing had the jet everyone wanted. Delta had the order in its pocket. But the world's most disciplined airline was about to surprise everyone. The control obsession. Delta wasn't just looking for a shiny new jet. What it really wanted was control. For years, Delta's leadership has believed the money isn't in bragging rights. It's in owning aircraft that arrive on time, fit easily into the system, and stay affordable to run for decades. Flexibility mattered most. The Dreamliner looked impressive, but its long wait times meant Delta would be years away from putting one to work. Airbus, meanwhile, was offering something far more practical. The A330neo, a modernized version of a jet Delta, already flew. And the A350, a true long-haul flagship that could match the 787 on range and efficiency. Both were available sooner and carried a lower price tag, giving Delta an upgrade without straining its balance sheet. Delta's desire wasn't about chasing headlines or any kind of prestige. What it wanted was simple, predictable costs, easy training, and planes that kept schedules reliable. In an industry where thin margins decide winners and losers, Delta was only looking for something practical, a fleet plan it could afford and manage on its own terms. Dreamliner's dirty secret. Delta already had the Dreamliner in its hands. Those 18 jets inherited from Northwest should have been the perfect answer to its fleet problem. But in reality, the deal was stuck. Did you know? When Boeing first launched the 787, airlines placed over 600 orders before the jet had even flown a single test flight. It became the fastest selling wide body in aviation history. That frenzy created the massive backlog Delta was now staring at. The Dreamliner was a victim of its own success. Boeing's order book was overflowing, with delivery slots pushed back for years. Even airlines that got in early were stuck with long waits and frustrating delays. Development had already gone billions over budget, suppliers struggled to meet Boeing's exacting standards, and technical issues piled up one after another. For Delta, that wasn't acceptable. The airline needed aircraft it could fly immediately. Not a promise half a decade away, and the sticker price didn't help. The 787 carried a premium tag while Airbus was quietly sliding across offers that looked far better on Delta's spreadsheets. In the end, the problem boiled down to timing and money. Boeing's Starjet was stuck in a years-long queue while Airbus could hand over planes sooner and for less. The Airbus Ambush in late 2014, Delta shocked the industry. Instead of firming up its 787 order, it announced a massive $14 billion deal with Airbus, 25A35900s 25 and 25A33900neos. 25 For Boeing, it was a stinging loss. 
The Dreamliner was supposed to be the natural choice for Delta, one of the world's top carriers. Instead, Airbus walked away with a contract that covered almost every wide-body mission in Delta's network. The reasoning was simple but ruthless. The A330neo was cheaper to acquire and familiar to crews and mechanics who already knew the older A330s inside out. The A350, meanwhile, gave Delta a brand new long-haul flagship that could compete with the 787 on efficiency and fly the deepest routes across the Pacific. And most importantly, Airbus could deliver them sooner. Two years later, Delta sealed the break. In 2016, it officially cancelled the inherited 18-plane 787 order. What started as a merger leftover was now erased, and Delta's long-haul future was firmly painted in Airbus colours, a fleet reborn. Delta's rejection of the Dreamliner sent ripples through the industry. By cancelling its 787s and doubling down on Airbus, Delta reshaped both its own network and the balance of power in the Airbus-Boeing rivalry. The immediate result was clarity. Delta retired its fuel-hungry 747s and later its entire 777 fleet, replacing them with A350 on long-haul and trans-Pacific missions. The A330neos slotted in neatly on medium and Atlantic routes. Their new generation engines burned far less fuel than the aging 767s they replaced, giving Delta long-term savings with every flight. For Airbus, it was validation. Winning Delta proved it could do more than nibble at Boeing's dominance. It could beat them head-to-head -head in the US. For Boeing, the optics were painful. An American carrier had turned down its showcase jet, one that had cost more than $30 billion to develop. Delta's move reinforced a truth in aviation. Airlines don't buy the flashiest plane. They buy the one that best fits their network, their balance sheet, and their timing. The Master Plan In 2020, as the pandemic ripped through aviation, Delta made another bold decision. It retired its entire 777 fleet. These big twin jets had once been the backbone of trans-Pacific flying, but their fuel burn was high and demand had collapsed. Rather than pour money into keeping them alive, Delta doubled down on the A350. With its long range and lower cost per seat, the jet delivered everything the 777 could, but more efficiently. At the same time, Delta went bargain hunting. Instead of waiting years for new builds, it scooped up used A350s from LATAM, then pushed them through deep cabin refits. The result was a smart combination, low capital cost up front, paired with premium interiors after retrofit. The A330neo slotted in alongside, covering mid-range missions and giving Delta flexibility to adjust capacity depending on demand. But this wasn't a clean break from Boeing. In 2022, Delta ordered 100 Boeing 737-10s, signaling that while Airbus had won the long-haul fight, Boeing still had a role on domestic and short-haul routes. By balancing Airbus for wide bodies and Boeing for narrow bodies, Delta proved that the smartest fleet strategy is the one that keeps both giants on their toes. The Backyard Defeat Delta's rejection of the 787 was more than a single fleet swap. It was a symbolic win in the larger Airbus-Boeing rivalry, one that showed how the battle for airlines wasn't always about raw technology, but about timing and trust. For Airbus, winning Delta was a statement of maturity. For decades, the European manufacturer had been the underdog, slowly chipping away with smaller victories. Now it had secured a $14 billion wide-body deal from America's most profitable airline and in Boeing's own backyard. It was validation that Airbus could compete head-to-head -head with its rival, not just in Europe or Asia, but in the very market Boeing once considered untouchable. For Boeing, it was a warning. The Dreamliner had dazzled with promise, yet its backlog, high price and early technical troubles left cracks in the armour. Delta needed aircraft that were affordable and available sooner, and Airbus delivered both. The industry took note. Airlines don't always buy the flashiest jet. They buy the right airplane, at the right moment, with terms that make sense. On that stage, Airbus had outplayed Boeing, and Delta gave them the platform to prove it. In the end, Delta didn't just cancel a jet, it walked away from a $10 billion promise. The airplane Boeing said no airline could resist. 
That choice rewrote the balance of power and proved that even the most dazzling machine can't survive if it doesn't fit the numbers. As the next battles shift to cleaner fuels and new designs, one question lingers. When the next $10 billion gamble arrives, which side will the airlines choose? Was Delta right to walk away from the Dreamliner? Let us know in the comments and subscribe for more stories from the skies.